Hey, what's going on, guys? What is happening? Good morning, everybody. You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. Today is Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. We actually got a bunch of interesting news to talk about today. I think we're going to wind up titling today's video something along the lines of YouTuber headed to prison for five and a half years uh, and mortgage rates headed over 10%. Those are kind of two of the uh, the, the big stories we're going to be talking about today. Uh, YouTuber Omi in a Hellcat was sentenced to five and a half years in prison and will forfeit 30 million million dollars. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys watched his YouTube channel. Uh, he, he was kind of a car guy um, and he's actually got a kind of a really interesting life story. He had a, a pretty rough time uh, growing up. So that's one of the stories we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the other story we're going to be talking about today is uh, yesterday, Jay Powell uh, testified in front of Congress. We got some interesting takeaways from that. Uh, we're going to be talking about the housing market, how uh, how markets reacted to Jay Powell's uh, speech or, or, or questioning yesterday uh, and a whole lot more. So uh Without further ado, let's, ho oh, you know, uh, I've been recommending a lot of like shows, movies, podcasts, things like that. Uh, check out Joe Rogan recently had CoffeeZilla on. Uh, I don't watch CoffeeZilla's YouTube channel, uh, but I am kind of familiar with him. I am kind of familiar with some of the stories that he's done. And uh, in the podcast, I've, I've watched maybe about 30 minutes of clips over the past day or two. Uh, and in the podcast, uh, they talked about uh, Logan Paul's uh, crypto zoo scam or whatever that was. Um, and they also talked on, talked about uh, Sam Bankman-Fried and that whole saga. It's kind of funny how that's uh, that's disappeared out of the news. Uh, but uh, yeah, check out uh, Joe Rogan's recent Spotify podcast with CoffeeZilla if you're into crypto uh, or if you like kind of like uh, cons and financial crimes and things like that. Uh, you'll probably find that episode to be interesting. Before we hop into today's video, shout out to the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. Uh, ExpressVPN allows you to watch your favorite shows that might not be available in your country. Uh, you can also access websites and platforms that you may not be able to otherwise access from within your country. Uh, you can hide your browsing history from your ISP. Uh, also, if you're not in charge of your Wi-Fi and you don't want whoever is in charge of your Wi-Fi uh, knowing that you're watching uh, weird stuff on, <laughs> on video uh, or visiting weird websites, uh, you can hide that as well. You can add a layer of security while you're on public Wi-Fi networks, uh, and you can get the best pricing on airlines, hotels, and travel. Right now, ExpressVPN has a deal going on. If you sign up for one year, uh, you'll save 33%. Uh, link in the description box below if you guys want to check them out, ExpressVPN. So let's talk about how markets finished up yesterday. The Dow finished down 574 points. NASDAQ was down 1.89%. And the S&P 500 was down 62 points. Uh, crypto continues to trade sideways, looking at the top 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 coins. Uh, really just kind of sideways action. Some coins up a percent, up a half a percent. Some coins down a half a percent, down a percent. Uh, so that's kind of how markets finished up yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about the Omni in a Hel Omni? Omi in a Hellcat. Uh, he was sentenced to five and a half years in prison. He'll also forfeit uh, $30 million. And I believe he has to pay back five or six million dollars uh, in back taxes. Uh, there used to be a service called Gears TV where instead of signing up for cable and paying hundreds of dollars for cable plus movie channels, uh, you could pay something like $12 a month. And uh, basically what Omi and a Hellcat was doing, he was subscribing to all these cable services and movie channels, but then he was streaming it out to everybody else and charging for it. Now, the way that I've heard him explain it, and it actually kind of makes a lot of sense, I'm not like a whiz on these types of laws and things like that, but uh, the way he explained it is, or I guess kind of how he tried to justify it was he basically said, if I have cable and I invite a friend over to watch a movie or, or watch a, a ball game or something like that, uh, you know, the, the cable company's not going to come after me for that. Uh, well, you know, I'm simply sharing my cable with a bunch of people out there, and typically laws tend to lag behind technology, so I think it's very possible uh, that at least early on he probably wasn't doing anything wrong uh, one thing you got to realize about the government is if the government if a regulator says you're doing something wrong uh, even if you're not even if you're following the letter of the law uh, if uh, if the government or a regulator decides to say that you're violating the law uh, all of a sudden it's it's incumbent upon you to spend tens of thousands hundreds of thousands even millions of dollars to prove that you're right um, and you're never going to get that money back a little bit about his backstory so uh, his name is Bill Omar Carrasquillo. Uh, he has eight, over 800 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, he was convicted of cable piracy, and uh, he supposedly had a pretty rough, rough life. He was one of 38 kids. Think about that, 38 kids. Uh, his mother was deported when he was young, and she wound up ultimately dying of a coca uh, co co uh, cocaine overdose. Uh, his father was teaching him how to cook crack at 12 years old. Uh, really a guy who had no chance at life 
uh, didn't grow up in a good community, probably didn't have a whole lot of family support, didn't necessarily get a great education, uh, but he managed to create, you know, kind of found a, found a loophole, found a way to make some money, um, and uh, he, he apparently wound up making over $38 million uh, before he was shut down by the FBI, had over 100,000 subscribers to his service, and again, the business was Gears TV. If any of you guys were subscribers to Gears TV, uh, drop a comment down below. You know, I, I remember like sites like Ninja Video, I know there's torrent sites out there, uh, obviously there's, there's like Cody where you can jailbreak fire sticks and things like that. Um, this was a little bit of a different of a service, but it, if any of you guys kind of have a deeper understanding of what Gears TV was um, or what the laws like this uh, were, you know, or the laws kind of surrounding this type of thing, uh, I know Icarus is always good with this stuff, so feel free to drop a comment down below. His lawyer said it was a legal gray area. Um, and again, they compared it to having a friend over to watch TV who doesn't have cable. Uh, but kind of an, an interesting and crazy story there. Uh, wish him the best. You know, I, I was kind of rooting for him. Uh, I didn't follow his YouTube channel super closely, but I remember uh, seeing some videos over the years. I know he was raided in 2019. Uh, he was charged in 2020, and here we are three years later, and it, it's finally getting resolved. Uh, again, he was sentenced to five years. He was saying he's only going to do like three years to two or three years. Um, I would assume that's a federal crime, which I don't think the federal system has parole. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, somehow he's going to be coming home in two or three years. Uh, so an interesting post on Reddit yesterday. Somebody said, how high will mortgage rates have to go to meaningfully lower home prices? And uh, the truth is, it doesn't really matter. As long as the government keeps spending money, inflation is going to keep getting worse. Uh, the Fed isn't going to make a dent in inflation. Uh, also, the market is at a standstill. Nobody's buying at these, uh, these interest rates that we've talked about. You can have high interest rates or you can have high prices, but you can't have both at the same time. Uh, there is no amount of raising interest rates that's going to make home prices come down uh, reason being you know buyers just aren't interested in buying and sellers don't want to sell their homes for less or they're trapped in their home anyone who's bought a home in the last year two years in some markets even three years if you bought a home for five hundred thousand your home is down 15 percent that's 15 30 45 60 75 so that means you're you're underwater you're in the whole seventy five thousand dollars to, to get out of your home uh, you're going to have to pony up $75,000 to walk away from that loan. Most people don't have that money, and the people who do have the money don't want to do that. Uh, here's uh, another problem is most of the time when people, some people are forced to move, right? Maybe divorce, maybe you move across the country, maybe you have to move across the country to care for uh, an ill relative. Uh, but ultimately, the reason that most people wind up uh the reason that most people wind up uh, changing homes is, is to upgrade, right? They want to move to uh, a better part of town. They, they want a bigger backyard. They want a bigger home. Uh, well, with the interest rates as high as they are, uh, you know, you're going to have to spend almost twice as much money to, to basically get an equal home uh, as you have right now. So who's going to do that? Uh, nobody's going to do that. And, and so I think the only way that home prices are going to start coming down um, is if the Fed can cause job losses. Um, or if, if the Fed can just kind of hurt the overall economy, a lot of the Airbnb sellers, especially the ones who are over leveraged, are going to wind up having to sell a, a bunch of their properties, which is going to put more properties on the market. Um, and also, we're going to need people to lose their homes. Um, and until people start doing short sales, until people start getting foreclosed on, uh, until mass job losses really kind of start kicking off, uh, we're not going to see home prices come down no matter how high rates go. Uh, I saw a video from Patrick Bet David yesterday. He was saying we need to keep rates here. You know, it's not normal to have 0%, 1%, 2% interest rates. Uh, you know, people who are, you know, 20, 30, 35 years old, we've known nothing uh, but low rates for our entire lives. So the idea of paying 7% for a mortgage is kind of crazy. Uh, but historically, the, the rates we have today are actually relatively low. Uh, the problem is that home prices are at all-time highs. Uh, but I think we will need to keep rates where they're at for a couple years uh, in order for people to kind of get used to these. Uh, I touched on a little bit in yesterday's video about the congressional hearing with Jay Powell. Uh, one thing that was, you know, our politicians are absolute idiots, right? Like the world is crumbling around us. Home affordability is crazy. I, I would argue we're already in a recession, but uh, you know, the, at the very least, we're headed towards a very deep recession. And you know, these these congressmen just like to hear themselves talk. Uh, again, while the world is crumbling around us, while nobody can afford homes, while Americans are struggling, uh, there were actually congressmen and congresswomen talking about how we don't have enough Latinos in the Fed. Uh, what a joke. That's what your concern is right now. Uh, I saw the other week uh, uh, Joe Biden's press secretary, that Jean, Jean Pierre, was talking about, we think we're doing a fantastic job because we have the most trans people and gays and lesbians and people of color in a cabinet than ever before. Um, 
you know, great, but uh, the economy is is worse than it's ever been before. Uh, you know, thing, things are shit right now. Um, and you're bragging about how you have the most trans people and the most people who identify as women in, in your cabinet. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Jerome Powell went on to say that they're going to raise rates faster than expected. They're going to raise rates higher than expected. And they're going to leave rates elevated longer than expected. And there was a, an interesting line of questioning uh, from a congressman named John Kennedy out of Louisiana. And he basically asked Powell, a line of questioning about, you know, historically when rates go up, unemployment goes up. So I forget what the ratio is, but basically for every point you raise the rates, unemployment's going to go up 2% or unemployment's going to go up 3%. And so he was asking Jerome Paul, he said, do you want people to lose their jobs? And obviously Jerome Paul doesn't want to come out and say, I want people to lose their jobs, even though he does. Um, but, uh, the John Kennedy basically kept asking, he said, you know, historically speaking, if we look back at history, in order to get down to, uh, you know, the 3.8 or 4% uh, inflation rate, uh, we're going to have to have something like five, five and a half percent unemployment. And Jay Powell said, well, yeah, you know, historically that is true. Uh, just for context, I believe during the Great Recession, unemployment was at, was it at 7%? I want to say it was at about 5.7%. Uh, but then John Kennedy said, look, in order to reach your target of 2% 2 uh, 2 inflation, uh, if we look back at history, that would mean that we're going to see 10% unemployment. And Jay Powell basically, no, no, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to see that. Uh, but then Kennedy said, but looking back historically, isn't it true that for you know, where we're sitting at now, for you to get unemployment down to 2%, or for you to get interest rates down to 2%, or I'm sorry, for you to get inflation down to 2%, um, we would see a 10% unemployment rate. And, and Powell kind of conceded and said, yes. Uh, let's see, Kennedy, Kennedy then went on to ask, uh, would it help you, would it help you to lower inflation without people, without costing people jobs if the government cut back on spending? And again, you know, Jay Powell doesn't want to get involved in politics. He, he doesn't want to be seen as signing with Republicans or Democrats. So he was hesitant to say anything, uh, but he basically kind of acknowledged like, yes, if, if you guys stop spending so much money, uh, we could lower inflation without costing as many people their jobs. Uh, Jay Powell also talked on crypto. Uh, he essentially came out and said that crypto is an interesting technology. It shows a lot of promise. It will be part of our financial system. He said uh, one of the biggest problems is the lack of regulation. He said a lot of the problems that crypto has aren't unique to crypto, right? Crypto is not a bad thing. Uh, the problems that crypto sees are the same problems that other markets and other industries uh, see as well. The problem is, he says, it, it's kind of the Wild West. He said there, there's a, a lack of regulation, and that's why a lot of these scams and rug pulls and everything else are happening. Uh, let's see here. I think my notes always get kind of jumbled when it goes on my phone. Uh, markets had been expecting, uh, and, and here's what's kind of interesting, right? Everybody's acting like the sky is falling right now, but really, Jay Powell and the Fed haven't said anything different than they've been saying for months and even years, right? Like, they're, they're, they're not going to pivot anytime soon. They're not going to lower rates. They're not going to cut rates. They're going to leave rates elevated high. And we, we've talked about the markets and people on social media and talking heads on TV. Nobody has really wanted to believe this. Now, I think Jay Powell does hold some blame for this, right? He He's kind of continued pushing this narrative that we may not have a recession. Uh, we may be able to have a soft landing. I, I think he's been setting unrealistic expectations. Uh, the markets are going to crash. People are going to lose their jobs. There is going to be pain. This is going to drag on uh, longer than we want. Inflation is going to remain high longer than expected. Um, and uh, I, I think the markets are finally just kind of starting to wake up and believe him. Uh, let's see. Uh, so kind of what we have going on right now, not, not quite the same situation, but back in the seventies, they, they kind of pussyfooted around, right? We'll, we'll raise inflate or we'll raise interest rates slowly. You know, the, the markets will kind of tame a little bit, then we'll cut rates or we'll slow down with the rate, rate with the rate hikes. Uh, you know, then inflation continues to get worse and you kind of do this seesaw back and forth, yo-yoing up and down. And it wasn't until Paul Volcker came in and raised rates to 20% uh, that we finally slowed down inflation. I kind of see the same thing happening right now where we're kind of pussyfooting around uh, when they do just need to be jacking up the rates. I think we get the January inflation number, something like March 14th. So that's uh, probably about a week away. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how those numbers come out. Uh, 
and you know, if housing does crash, think about everything that that's going to affect, right? That's going to affect home builders. Home builders aren't building homes right now. Uh, that's going to affect the mortgage industry. That's going to affect the real estate industry. That's going to affect lumber companies. That's going to affect Home Depot, uh, Lowe's. This is going to have a huge effect on the overall economy. And, and like I've been saying, uh, I'm not going to pretend to know what direction the housing market's going to go, what's going to happen. The world is too crazy. Uh, but one thing that we do know is, is as we kind of enter the, the spring home sale season, the, the summer season, when, when most people are buying homes, when home prices historically you know kind of start rising uh that's when we'll get a much better idea of what direction things are going uh, i don't know you know the biden administration is not going to stop spending money so don't expect things to get better anytime soon uh, we got a cnbc article meta is planning thousands more job cuts after widespread layoffs uh meta aka facebook had already laid off with 11,000 employees a couple months back uh the new layoffs could start as soon as this week and there's going to be thousands of people laid off um, okay, skip that note. Uh, so I talked about a video a day or two ago how Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma was set to legalize recreational marijuana. They were going to tax it at 15%. They were going to have more people from Texas buying marijuana in Oklahoma uh, than Oklahomans. Uh, well, surprisingly, Oklahoma voters voted against recreational marijuana on Tuesday. So recreational marijuana uh, will not be coming to Oklahoma. Uh, you guys may or may not have seen this story. This is kind of crazy, kind of a sad story. Uh, four Americans went to Mexico from South Carolina. Uh, the, the reporting on this story is really weird. Some people are saying she went for plastic surgery. So it was a woman and three of her friends. Uh, the men were going just to kind of accompany her and, and to kind of keep her safe. Uh, she was from South Carolina. She went down to a border town in Mexico, I think kind of by Brownsville, Texas, uh, more, more Morado, something like that. Um, and the... I don't even really know how to report on this story because the reporting is kind of so crazy. So some reports are that she went down for a tummy tuck surgery. Uh, other reports are that they were going down to buy medication. And some people are actually saying that some of the guys, or at least one of the guys she went down with, were Bloods gang members, and they were potentially actually going down there to buy drugs. When you hear people talk about this town, some people say this is a terrible town, the border towns are very dangerous, and this isn't a surprise. Uh, other people are saying that the town isn't that bad. You know, I grew up there. I used to cross over all the time to go shopping with my mom. Uh, you know, when we were under 21, we used to go over to go to the bars. It's a safe town. Bad things only happen to you if, if you're kind of looking for trouble. Um, it's not really clear whether they were kidnapped. There was like a, a shootout. A Mexican woman was shot in a crossfire. Um, and there is a video of the incident. These people were, were basically dragged out of their car. Um, and, you know, it, it, was, it was rough to watch. They were basically being tossed in the back of this truck uh, like cattle. I believe they were taken to some shack like on the outside of town. Uh, and eventually they were rescued. I think two of them were dead. Uh, one is in very serious condition. Another one was shot in the leg. Uh, the surviving uh, people are, are back in the U.S. under the care of the FBI and at the hospital. Uh, but the, the reporting on this story is all over the place. If you guys have kept up with the story and know a little bit more about it, feel free to drop a comment down below. I was going to Google it this morning and see if there's any clearer details on the story. Uh, you know, Ohio's been having a streak of bad luck. We had the, uh, the East Palestine disaster. Uh, the other day in Ohio, a dump truck collided with another Norfolk Southern train. Um, you know, I think Norfolk Southern has had like five train der derailments in the past six months. Kind of crazy. And right after this happened, it took Mayor Pete, what, like 10 days? Or it might have even been as long as 18 days to, to go visit the area. Um, when he was questioned about it, he kind of downplayed it. He said, oh, there's four or 500 train derailments per year. Uh, what's the big deal? Uh, this seems like a pretty serious problem. Uh, not sure why we're addressing it. And I think I talked in a video the other day. I used to live behind a railroad track. Um, and I never really thought twice uh, about living behind a railroad track. Uh, but seeing all these derailments and chemical spills and things like that it would kind of freak me out living uh, uh, butted right up against a railroad track. Zero Hedge had an article, Why Student Loan Relief is a Terrible Idea. Uh, it went on to say it doesn't solve the problem of tuition costs. It penalizes those people who paid their loans. Uh, and he says everybody, even the people getting relief, will pay for it with increased inflation. Uh, Peter Schiff was, was quoted in an article. Yes, he's a constant doomer, but he says all roads lead to our hard landing. Uh, he went on to say everybody is waking up to the fact that the Fed is losing Losing the battle against inflation. And worse than that, they don't really have the power to stop it. Uh, we're starting to see an increase in foreclosures in 2023. And like we kind of said earlier, um, that's likely going to have to happen to bring home prices down. The default rate on FHA loans is a canary in the coal mine uh, for the entire U.S. economy. And it looks like a recession is on the way uh, if we're not already in one. 
Uh, the auto loan default rate is at 6%, which is even higher than during the Great Recession back in 2008. Uh, and a recession is either here or will be here later this year. Uh, the longer inflation stays high, the worse and longer lasting the recession is going to be. Um, okay, so uh, recent studies found men should ejaculate 21 times per month. Not doing so raises the risk of anxiety, depression, uh, and erectile dysfunction. So uh, if you're following the no fat movement, uh, you may want to reconsider. Credit card debt is at almost $1 trillion, much higher than the pandemic and the highest level uh, of all time, uh, or at least in recent history. Um, and uh, the economy can, can, can sustain itself for a while on debt, uh, but eventually they will run out of steam. Uh, a lot of Americans are being lied to by realtors and mortgage brokers. People are being told, uh, marry the house and date the rate. This is very dangerous. Uh, you know, Don't buy a home uh, assuming that you can refinance. And I've talked about this in other videos. But one of the tricky things about buying a home right now is if you buy a home right now, you're basically going to have to settle. You're, you're likely not going to be able to be in the area of town you ideally would like to be in. Maybe the home's a little bit smaller than you would like. Maybe it has a bigger backyard. Um, and so is it worth buying a home that's not really your dream home? You know, I, I, th I think a lot of people have this idea that they need to buy their dream home, right? I think, they're, I think people need to uh, settle into the idea that, you know, starter homes are a thing and your first home probably isn't going to be your dream home. Uh, but my point is, you know, it, it's a pain in the butt and it's expensive to buy and sell homes. Um, and it kind of sucks to buy a home that's not big enough for you today just for the sake of buying a home uh, when you know that in a couple of years you're just going to have to uh, sell your home and buy another home. Um, what are we at? Oh, we're at 20 minutes. You know, we're going to, uh, I got one more story for you and then we'll wrap things up. Zero Hedge had an article, ex-CNN president Jeff Zucker ordered staff to ignore the lab leak theory in regards to the Mexican beer cough. Uh, that theory recently bolstered the department, uh, was recently bolstered by the Department of, uh, of Energy as well as the FBI, finding that a lab leak was a most likely origin. Uh, and a reporter at CNN had tweeted that someday, uh, in a, a long time ago, a reporter at CNN had tweeted, someday we will stop talking about the lab leak theory, maybe even admit it was racist, but that day is not here yet. Uh, basically just realize that the, the media lies to you, your government lies to you. Joe, uh, Joe Rogan the other day uh, was quoted, there were a bunch of articles about this. He was quoted as saying, uh, what did he say? He said uh, CNN lost a fuckload of credibility, uh, you know, during the whole Mexican beer cough period. And I recently heard uh, that Elon Musk was thinking about putting a misinformation warning on all of CNN's tweets. Uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, we had a few other stories that I didn't get to cover yesterday I was going to do today, but we're already at 20 minutes. So we're going to wrap things up. Uh, be sure to check out the sponsor of today's video in the description box below, ExpressVPN. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. Uh, and as always, I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, and opinions on anything and everything we've discussed in today's video. Uh, so drop those down below. As always, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on tomorrow's video. Uh, peace. I'm out.